We're going to read and write a flowchart proof. This is lesson 2.7a. We have nine previous videos for chapter 2, and if you look in the description, you'll see a link to the geometry playlist so you can watch those. So we now know there's two column proofs, and a second type of proof is called a flowchart proof, which uses boxes and arrows to show the structure of the proof. So a flowchart is like this. This isn't a flowchart proof, it's just a flowchart. The lamp doesn't work, so the arrow brings us to this box, which asks us, lamp is plugged in? If the answer is no, then we plug in the lamp, problem solved. If the answer is yes, it is plugged in and it's still not working, is the bulb burnt out? We can go sideways to yes, put a new bulb in, solve the problem, or if it's no, we can continue down further and further with our train of logic, asking, well, is the socket broken? Is the electricity in the house turned off? So a flowchart is a concept map. A flowchart proof has the statements inside the boxes and the reasons written underneath them. See that? Now what I want you to remember is we're going to be seeing given and prove. The given is the if, it's the hypothesis, and the prove is the then, the conclusion, in our if-then statement, okay? In a flowchart proof, the steps move from left to right or from top to the bottom. And it's really important you remember that. From left to right or top to bottom. And the arrows connected to each box show the direction of logic. And the justification for each step is written below the box. Just like I said. That's our reasons, our justification. So it brings us to a little yellow hand, which means you should probably write this down. It's the common segments theorem. And the theorem says, given collinear points, and remember collinear means all the points are on the same line. We have A, B, C, and D arranged as shown. If segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then AC, that's both of these, is congruent to BD, that's both of these. So we have our hypothesis, which says segment AB is congruent to segment CD, and our conclusion is AC is congruent to BD. See? That's the hypothesis, that's the conclusion, that's the if, that's the then, okay? We can use a given flowchart proof to write a two-column proof. Sometimes we can follow the line of deductive reasoning better with a flowchart, then transfer that information into a two-column proof. So, we're going to use the given flowchart proof to write a two-column proof of the common segments theorem, this theorem we just learned, okay? We have our given, that's our if, and our proof, that's our then, the hypothesis and conclusion. So we've got segment AB is congruent to segment CD. So when you look at your diagram, you can mark it up. You can figure out what the diagram is showing us. And you can put in little tick marks for congruence or, you know, for segments or angles. So these are congruent segments. So I put a tick mark here and a tick mark there. And when I saw my flow chart, I added more information. So originally we just had this line with these four points on it, okay? So the flow chart proof says the given segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And if they're congruent, they're equal, aren't they? That's the definition of congruent segments. So we can say AB equals CD. So we know this equals this, okay? Now, from B to C is just one measure. And we're going to use this measure from B to C to make AC, and we're going to also use B to C to make BD. So we can say BC is equal to BC. The one for AC, that's the same measurement as the one we use for BD, okay? And that's the reflexive property of equality. Now, because BC is equal to BC, we can say AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD. We're just adding BC to both sides of this, see? That's the addition property of equality. We took these two BCs on each side of the equal sign and added it to this and got that, all right? Now we're going to move to the right and this box is directly related to this one, so we're going to say if we've got this, AB plus BC, AB plus BC is equal to AC, and BC plus CD is equal to BD. Well, we know that these two are equal to each other, and if this one is equal to AC and the bottom one is equal to BD, remember, they're equal to each other, then that means AC is equal to BD. That's substitution. And that brings us to our definition of congruent segments. Our proof, 
that segment AC is congruent to BD, okay? So all we have to do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, list those for our two column proof, and whatever's written underneath those boxes, we match them to the statement for our reasons, okay? Now, we can use a given two column proof to write a flowchart proof. So in this one, we took a flowchart and wrote a two column. Now we're gonna take a two column and make a flowchart, okay? So we have our given, angle two is congruent to angle four. So now we can mark it up. If angle two is congruent to angle four, we can put tick marks like that to show that quick, can't we? And remember, supplementary angles are 180 degrees. Aren't three and four supplementary angles and aren't one and two supplementary angles? Well, we need to prove that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. So remember, these two are equal to each other. These two are congruent and equal to each other. So our two column proof says our given angle two is congruent to angle four. We know angles one and two are supplementary. We know angles three and four are supplementary. And that's a linear pair theorem. If these are congruent to each other, then one and three must be congruent to each other because they make a 180 degree angle, right? So let's say that this was 40, this would have to be 140, wouldn't it? Okay, so we know if these are both 40 degrees, then one and three would have to be 140 to make the 180. So that means angle one is congruent to angle three, and that's the congruent supplements theorem. That brings us to the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. If they're congruent, they're equal, right? And that's the definition of congruent angles. So we've got four statements and four reasons. So we know that angle two is congruent to angle four. We know three and four are supplementary and one and two are supplementary. We take our two column proof and we turn it into a flowchart proof. We start with our given. Here we have our given. And it's going to take us to this one, and we're going to list this one above it with an arrow, and then number four below it with an arrow. See? And we're going to talk about the order of the flow chart and where these arrows go and where the boxes go in a second, okay? In our next video, I still have a little bit more I want to show you, but I did want to tell you in our next video, we're going to talk about paragraph proofs, which means there's two column proofs, flowchart proofs, and paragraph proofs. You might have a favorite. So if your assignment is to do a paragraph proof, but you're better at flowchart ones, make a flowchart proof for the, from the information and turn it into a paragraph proof or turn it into a two column proof or turn the two column into a flowchart or whatever, because you're going to find that out of these different proofs, you're gonna like one more than the others, okay? So, we can use the given two column proof to write a flowchart proof, all right? So our given is that segment AC, that's this top bar, is congruent to BD. And we need to prove that segment AB is congruent to CD, all right? We need to prove that this is congruent to this. So it's the opposite of what we did over here. Over here, we were told that they were congruent, and then we had to prove that AC was equal to BD. Now we're being told that AB is equal to CD, and we have to prove that these guys are congruent. So it's flipped around backwards. So we have our two column proof, and we've got our given that segment AC is congruent to B, segment BD, which means they're equal, right? If they're congruent, they're equal. So we can just say this definition of congruent segments, okay? Then, if you look here, we've got AB plus BC equals AC. Because of the segment addition postulate, we can say AB plus BC equals AC. We can also say BC plus CD equals BD, okay? Then we take the AB and the BC, and it's equal to BC plus CD. So this part's missing, okay? So we can cover this part of it up. All we did was say this added together is equal to this added together, and we rewrote it for number four, okay? That's substitution using steps two and three to get there. Then it says BC equals BC, that reflexive property of equality. Now, we saw this in the previous one. They're saying BC equals BC because they're saying for this AC, 
this length of the BC is equal to the length of the BC used to make BD. See? So it's, this is equal to this. It's kind of silly, but that's true, and it's the reflexive property of equality. Then number six is AB equals CD. Now, how did I get that from this? Well, if you look, it says subtraction property of equality from step four. So look, we've got a plus BC and a BC plus, right? So what if I did minus BC and a minus BC? What would we get? We'd get AB, that makes a zero pair, that makes a zero pair and cancels out, and we'd have equals CD. So using the subtraction property of equality for number four, we get AB equals CD, AB equals CD, see? And if it's equal to it, it's congruent to it, and that's the definition of congruent segments. That was our proof, see? We can turn this into a flow chart. We've got seven steps and seven reasons. We say are given, that brings us, because it's congruent, it's equal, it brings us down here. We're gonna go sideways, and this segment addition postulate reason is gonna bring us to the substitution reason. This BC equals BC is related to this AB equals CD because we needed to do this, didn't we? That was that subtraction property of equality, which leads us to this one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, just like there's seven here. Now, we know when to stack the flowchart boxes when their logic is directly related. So we had this drawing from our first problem way back over here. We did this first flowchart to two column proof. I've got this copied over here and the diagram. We have that AB is congruent to CD and then we've got this orange line BC in the middle. And basically what's happening is when we take the blue line and add it to the orange line, we get AC. And when we take the orange line and add it to this blue line, we get BD, okay? So we have our given that segment AB is congruent to CD. This is congruent to this. That was our given. And we know if it's congruent, it's equal. So it's stacked because this congruent, therefore it's equal, they're directly re related to each other. You can think of the arrow as a therefore, okay? And the reasoning was the definition of congruent segments. Now we're gonna go sideways and up here it says BC equals BC. That means the orange line that is used to make AC is equal to the orange line used to make the BD, see? So they're saying BC is equal to BC. That's why it's like that. That's the reflexive property, okay? And that brings us to this. If, we're, if we've got a BC on both sides of the equal sign and we know that AB equals CD, well, then we can add this to this, like this. So we're going to take the AB equals CD and the BC on both sides of the equal sign, add them together, and we're going to end up with AB plus BC, AB plus BC equals BC plus CD, see? That's how we got that one. We added this to this and it brought us here, okay? So if this is equal to this and AB plus BC is AC and BC plus CD is BD, and remember these two are equal to each other, but this equals AC and this equals BD, well then AC must equal BD. Does that make sense? This is equal to this, this is equal to AC, and this is equal to BD. Well, if they're equal to each other, then AC equals BD. That's substitution. And that brings us to the definition of congruent segments, our proof segment AC is congruent to segment BD, okay? So when it says things like addition property of equality or subtraction property of equality, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about this or like what we did here, okay? Our next lesson is how to read and write paragraph proofs. That's going to be 2.7b. I know these proofs can be really confusing, but take them one step at a time. And like I said, if there's one type of proof that you're better at than the other, then use that easier proof to make the one you need to make. And don't forget to mark up your diagrams to help you figure things out. Okay? You use the information from the given. I'll see you next time. Bye.